Green. I hate to see it on my plates, but it's something we love to hear in business, which is what it is going to be my pleasure to pass you off to Rob, who's here to teach us a little bit about green and how it can maybe be sustainable in business, but also affordable too. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So thanks to be here today. Uh, today, I want to show you something that I learned in the last uh, few, not so few right now, but in the last month about green software. Okay, I, um, I, I dig around and find the Green Software Foundation uh, a few months ago. Um, the Green Software Foundation started uh, uh, a couple of years ago, as I remember. But at the last uh, COP27 in Paris, they decided to start even to kick off some web projects. And after that, I found the interesting stuff around the Green Software. And uh, I really love their approach okay, to propose um, their model to, to us, to developers, to companies. So the goal is to uh, set some principle that can be valid in general. And around this principle, uh, they want to build uh, some sort of uh, generic patterns to be greener and in the sense uh, of uh, awareness, in the sense of uh, effectiveness in our um, development process. And to do that, uh, we should work, everybody, on practices that can be adopted by the specific uh, cloud computing stack, the specific company, the specific scenario. Okay, This is uh, why this pyramid. Okay? In this lesson of today, uh, I want to uh, talk about energy efficiency uh, and hardware efficiency, okay? And in general, about the awareness of carbon footprint, okay? Probably uh, this is something, uh, this is a buzzword that's something really uh, on the hype right now because of climate change. Uh, what we can do with software, in, in my opinion, is not the big part of it but it's in, in, a, in a sense is a good part of it so uh, we can we can probably not change but be aware uh, to the issues that we contribute to 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 create okay with software and try to limit that okay this is the purpose of the session i hope so so Probably many of you or all of you knows the concept of carbon and uh, CO2. Uh, the CO2 is a gas that is, is in the air, okay? And we reproduce CO2. And uh, uh, almost every um, sort of material that burns produces CO2, okay? Uh, so it's very simple to uh, think about the CO2, a very common gas, but the problem is that uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the, the basics of the climate change and even the, 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 the effect that uh, the CO2 has in the atmosphere, think about this gas as a, ga a gas that um, make not uh, the heat uh, goes outside from the hurt. So it's a gas that uh, keeps the heating inside the hurt. So if we have uh, too much gas, we can dissipate uh, the, the heat of uh, the, the, the activities, of the ground activities. And so the, it can increase and increase and increase much more even year by year, okay? So the purpose of everyone in the earth should be to reduce our CO2 uh, by not emitting that, by reducing that, by like eating, okay? So observing it in some ways, okay? And uh, I'm trying to explain to you how we can uh, reduce it by using green energy and green software practices. Let's start by energy, okay? Uh, when you plug your uh, laptop or your um, appliance, your um, electronic appliance to the plug, uh, you can even think that it's like green because uh, it's not dirty from the wall uh, uh, 
uh, there's no oil, there is no gas, there's no carbon, okay? Um, but 90% uh, of the last uh, 30, 40 years energy came from uh, uh, burning oil, coal, and gas, okay? So by burning it, uh, well, a little bit of uh, um, assumption, okay? How can we produce energy today? It's uh, something really um, hard and articulated, but to make it short, uh, uh, when you have um, a cable and you create an electronic electromagnetic uh, field around this cable, you can produce energy, electricity inside that cable. So the process is burn something that can uh, make uh, some uh, rotators, uh, make uh, this kind of rotation and produce this energy in the form of electricity that we need for our devices. Okay, but it's not the only way. Okay, so this is the simple, the simplest way. Of course, it's simplest in terms of production, but the extraction is not so simple at all. Okay, the extraction of oil it's very very complicated. It's uh, it, it has some uh, really big consequences of the whole environment around the extraction points. Okay. With gas, it's not really the same, but when you find gas, you can simply stop to, to take it. You, you should just uh, take it and take it and take it. You just can just put a, like a, a stopper on it and stop taking it. So uh, while the coal is something that uh, you need to extract for a mine. So in, this, in a sense, uh, it's probably something that you can start and stop uh, for often. Okay, while oil and gas is is not so easy uh, in in terms of in terms of extraction and production. Okay, but after that, what I want to do with this slide is uh, don't think about uh, uh, your energy in your apartment, in your house, in your office. Be uh, be green just because you don't see uh, the dirty, you don't smell the um, the the. the flower of, of coal and gas, but uh, try to think where this energy comes from, okay? And with this assumption, I want to, uh, to tell you about the power usage effectiveness, okay? When you have, uh, in this slide, there's a data center, okay? But uh, in general, when you have uh, a device that um, wants to absorb uh, uh, like 100 watt, Okay, and you just uh, uh, produce 100 watt. Uh, I would say that it is efficient. But uh, if uh, you need some more watts to for the environment of this uh, device, for the overhead, for something that is not related specifically to the execution of that device, so. Uh, this is overhead, so the efficiency uh, of that uh, complex is not so high. In terms of data center, if uh, you have a data center with servers and the servers consumes like uh, 10 kilowatts, okay, but to run the data center, the service, we need uh, um, air conditioners, we need uh, some sort of appliance that uh, consumes electricity, okay. Uh, you have overhead, and in these slides, we see that with uh, uh, 15 kilowatts uh, ingested to the data center, just 10 kilowatts are uh, going to the servers, and the other five uh, are going as overheads, okay? This is uh, how we measure the power users effectiveness. So it's uh, um, formula with uh, on the, the upper side there is the total power ingested in a, um, in a data center in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a device in an environment and uh, in the lower side we have uh, the part that is used okay so of course uh, the goal of everybody should be to have a power user effectiveness of one Okay, so one should be optimal. Okay, it's we we we'll learn in the next slide that it's not so easy to achieve. Probably it's, it's impossible to achieve right now, but uh, good uh, measures can be one point one, 
1.01, okay? That's really, really good, okay? Of course, we should try to minimize this index uh, uh, closer to, zero, to 1, of course. Good. We have another uh, strong information from uh, data collected in the last uh, decades that uh, when you have a CPU and uh, you are above the 50% of uh, usage, you are just approached uh, the upper side of the uh, consumption, of the energy consumption. Okay, so here the reasoning is if uh, this is the curve of energy consumption, it is probably more efficient to run in this part than in this part. Because if I have a CPU that is just used for the 5%, like here, I'm using more than a half of the energy, the total energy that can be observed by the CPU. So the ratio here is if we have a CPU that costs a lot in terms of not just the money, Okay, in terms of production, in terms of resources used to produce it, okay, we should uh, use it, use it in terms of like almost abuse it. So use it uh, as much as we can, okay, in this upper bound, okay. So more than a fifty percent, I would say, closer to the close to the upper bound in terms of utilization, okay. Good. So, in this is not uh, all, an, an always true uh, slide. Okay, it, it can be re it can represent just a, um, a pattern. Okay, when you have a public cloud, when you use public cloud uh, and you use uh, shared resources like platform as a service, software as a service, uh, many of you probably are using uh, uh, Google Suite, Office 365, and so on, or even in platform as a service, if you have Azure, you can have uh, app service, you can have container instances on Amazon Web Service as well. There are a lot of good services that are platform as a service. In that case, we are build uh, uh, often by consumption and uh, uh, especially in uh, serverless uh, services, we um, are built just for uh, the, the CPU cycles that we use. Okay. This is very good from the cloud perspective, and this is also very good from the environment perspective because in, in this pattern, uh, the cloud provider can pull as much uh, a customer as they can into machines, into racks, into servers to fit uh, the entire capacity. So their objective, their goal is to reach the 100% utilization of all the servers they have and then to scale out to other servers. But if we have uh, a private cloud and uh, this is why it's opinionated, is like because it's not really um, the point of private cloud. But even if we have uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, even if we have uh, uh, a private data center, when we have those kind of approaches, uh, we usually uh, oversize our capacity in terms of the peak, in terms of uh, um, the capacity that we are forecasting. Okay. And probably in the normal operation time, we have an utilization rate that is not 100%, but we are we have oversized it to fit uh, um, the edge case, okay? So this is why I would suggest to uh, adopt uh, or even evaluate uh, services that are serverless, platform as a service, consumption uh, based, services uh, and so on because with that kind of services the public cloud provider can implement under the hood uh, their optimization in place to be greener but probably their goal is not to be greener but to uh, be um, more convenient 
And this is why I chose this uh, title for this slide for the session that green must be convenient. Because in my personal opinion, from what I learned in the field in the last few months, I uh, personally think that uh, to implement something, uh, we should uh, make it uh, sustainable first in terms of uh, uh, money. Okay, so it should be convenient uh, before all. And then uh, it, if it makes sense, uh, even from the other uh, points of view. So it, it, it's not a, it's not really um, romantic, okay, but uh, I would say that it's very practice and it's uh, very practical and uh, it makes sense because uh, in a market that is very competitive, uh, we shouldn't, we can't even, we, we are not able to afford a decision that is so expensive but green, uh, while someone else are using something that is very cheap but not green at all. So we must reason in terms of um, convenience, in terms of uh, uh, monetary. Okay, convenience. So in that case, public cloud uh, can uh, uh, pool resources in uh, less servers and then make uh, more money, okay, in a sense. So I really uh, want you to evaluate this kind of services because they are good alternatives of, um, for on-premises services and infrastructure as a service uh, pieces, building blocks that we are using today. Well, I also would like to, to show you um, this, um, this slide to let you know a thing. In, uh, well, just a, an assumption. When you see uh, white, it's because uh, uh, we have not data yet. So it's not a matter of good or bad. Okay, but uh, when we have colors, we can see the rate uh, more or less of uh, of green energy or not uh, uh, so green energy uh, from the country perspective. Okay, so in this case, we can uh, say that, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, Europe, we have uh, some good uh, countries, even in uh, South America. Okay. And um, unfortunately, in other countries, we have no uh, green situation yet, but I, I would uh, say I really hope uh, that can change in the near future. And uh, what, uh, why I'm saying that? Because uh, uh, I want to explain to you how it's uh, working, okay? When uh, we have uh, the capability to blend our energies, okay, uh, with uh, coal, gas, and wind, and uh, solar, uh, the most convenient option is to maximize the, um, the, the, the renewable energy. Why? Because they are free. Uh, well, they are not free at all. They need some investment in terms of plants, in terms of technology, okay? But uh, the source is almost free, okay? And it's green, so it doesn't produce any kind of pollution, okay? Because uh, wind and solar, they are not um, uh, they, they are not con they are not contribute to, to pollution uh, at all. But they are not uh, uh, continuous. So uh, if the wind stops uh, uh, blowing or uh, the sun stops shining, uh, we cannot have this kind of of sources but at the same time consumers us even us right now to deliver this session i need the energy with my because of my light because of the webcam because of the pc uh, with them presenting okay and uh, if uh, in this per uh, specific moment of time i don't have wind or solar my electricity provider should uh, provide me um, energy that comes from other sources, okay, that are coal and gas and oil, okay? Good. So another uh, bad deal is uh, the curtailment. So when uh, 
the demand goes down, today we are cutting uh, and throw away the energy from the renewable uh, sources. Why? Because there is a minimum of uh, like a threshold, okay, of of um, coal and gas that we need to burn to keep the fabrics open, okay, to keep the power plants open. And uh, even if uh, we have no so much demand of energy, uh, that kind of production should be uh, should be guaranteed, okay. So in this condition, I, I said that today because maybe I hope in the future this kind of approach can change, okay. But today, uh, which is the cheapest way to handle this kind of uh, situation to cut off the remaining part of the renewable energy by just refusing it by just not uh, um, ingesting it uh, in the market and uh, this is um, that's a pity of course so um, one thing that we can do and think about it is to uh, in a way try to reuse uh, that kind of energy in a way that today uh, we we didn't think yet okay but unfortunately this is something that is happening right now even okay so um that, this is a really interesting slide i just get from the um, the Green Software Foundation documentation learning platform, because uh, when I, I realized the, the nuclear plant is on the right side, I just said, whoa, but uh, it, it's correct, okay? So um, a power plant that is nuclear uh, can have uh, really huge uh, uh, consequences in case of a disaster, okay? But after that, uh, the impact of the, of the day-by-day -day routines uh, of it uh, are really minimal in terms of uh, environment compared to burning coal energy and oil okay so yes it's green okay so uh, it's green in terms of even of the capacity that can be, that can produce in terms of energy well uh, another thing that i want to show you but i of i just had the problem with the slide, a second. No, it's okay. Okay, is uh, um, the well, pardon, pardon me, a second, yeah. Okay, is the shifting, okay? Uh, shifting is a practice uh, to um, shift, okay? Our uh, consumption, our usage, uh, based on two um, features. The first is the time, and the second is the space, okay? In the time shifting, that uh, can be represented by this slide, we can just uh, decide to run our workloads in a time frame that can be considered greener, okay? What I mean with that, if uh, we know that uh, in uh, during the daytime, uh, our uh, energy producer is producing energy by using wind and solar, we can run our workloads in that period of time. So we are sure that we are using uh, uh, solar and wind to run our servers, okay? This is very easy to learn, to understand it in theory, but it's not so easy to implement in practice. Why? Because if we have uh, an e-commerce, uh, we cannot just say, oh, okay, e-commerce is open just uh, during the daytime or during uh, the time frame uh when the energy is green okay it's not something that uh, is convenient okay and remember green must be convenient so we can just stop selling stuff because it's not green okay because probably our competitor will uh, continue to sell it the stuff even during the night time okay so but uh, uh try to be um clever try to be um 
uh, to, to think about something that you can you could shift okay think about uh, a AI model okay uh, AT, ATL job okay something that is moving data from A to B okay if uh, we are accustomed to make ATL um, ATL jobs uh, running in the night because uh, we learn it from uh, the legacy. We learned that uh, uh, making that job running in the night is uh, less uh, in expensive for our service, less uh, generates less stress for our databases. Uh, but uh, we didn't really um, we we um, we wanted to to run it during the night because we haven't that kind of need but just because uh, it's a pattern okay we can shift it we can run uh, that jobs uh, when uh, the time frame is a good time frame is in terms of uh, energy consumption and sources an ai model the ai model is something that uh, can even run less uh, not less in terms of absolute uh, time frame uh, it can uh, even uh, even last for uh, days or weeks okay but uh, it just uh, runs uh, once uh, twice uh, three times a finite number of times when it's uh, trained it's okay yeah, i'm just making some assumptions so in that case i can train the model just in specific time frames or we can even make a space shifting okay with the space shifting i'm uh, using uh, something from a place that is not so green okay in terms of energy production uh, into other servers and location that are greener and we can even mix the the two uh, approaches so we can uh, run our ai model in uh, another place in another time frame so we can have uh, um, this uh, kind of workload in a greener place to then, of course, get back the result when it's ready. And think about this last part, get back the result. It's very important to remember it because uh, uh, don't underestimate the cost in terms of money and also uh, the environment of getting back uh, the result from a remote location. We have uh, bandwidth cost, we have even a cloud cost. Um, so keep in mind that because it's a side effect that can be sustainable as well. Okay. Good. In, I also want to um, propose to you two approaches. One is the carbon neutral and the other one is net zero. Carbon neutral is something that is, uh, has been discussed a lot in the last years and uh, it's the way companies can compensate their emissions with some uh, activities, okay? For instance, uh, if we want to reduce emissions, we can uh, uh, buy some credits, so paying someone to not emit carbon and this is called uh, often compensation okay also uh, more effective but not so easy actually really hard is the neutralization of removal so think about uh, a plant that uh, takes the air and extract the co2 to store it somewhere okay this is the most uh, simple way to understand how we can keep out the CO2 from the atmosphere, okay? But it's not so easy, it's energy um, consuming, of course. So, well, it's not so easy. Th th those are called offsets, okay? Because we are emitting, but we are also making something to compensate our emission, okay? This approach is uh, often called um carbon neutrality so go in a direction but even going the, in the other direction to compensate the effect well i want to propose you that uh, the very big deal is to not emit at all okay so uh, not emit co2 
if we not if we are not emitting CO2, we don't need to compensate it. Okay. And uh, it's harder, of course, uh, but it's something we can do starting by the energy. So if uh, uh, I, I would be sure that my home is uh, every day using uh, only uh, green energy from uh, solar and wind, I can say that I'm not uh, with, uh, with my home activities, of course, uh, I'm not producing CO2. Of course, this is not uh, true 100% because uh, I have stuff. I have this mouse, I have the microphone, I have uh, a lot of hardware. And uh, having this stuff uh, as well uh, as an intrinsic uh, consumption and pollution in CO2, CO2 equivalent for the atmosphere, because producing it, um, it uh, um, as, a, as a side effect, uh, as to produce uh, CO2 as well. But uh, I don't want to go in rabbit hole with the uh, hardware efficiency. Right now, we can uh, do this in the question time uh, if you are interested. In. So remember that the good thing is to avoid to emitting. And uh, after that, if we have, and probably we have, some residual um, CO2 uh, pollution, uh, CO2 production, we can compensate it with the previous approaches, okay? By paying someone, by planting uh, trees, uh, and so on. So one of the last points, uh, since the time is, you know, I have a few minutes more. Uh, the last point, one of the last points is the measurement. So if you uh, know the standards right now, we are in the period of having uh, the greenhouse gases standard uh, in uh, practice, that is uh, collecting an absolute score of a given company. Okay, so if my company today has something like uh, 100 uh, employees and uh, 100 servers, okay, my score um, should be 100, okay, for instance. Uh, and uh, my goal is to reduce this score, this uh, impact, this pollution impact, this CO2 impact to 50, okay. But this absolute measure they are not uh, really affected because uh, think about my company uh, resides to 20 people and uh, 20 servers. And after one year, I measure the score and it comes from that I reached 50. Is a good score? Probably, oh yes, and that was the goal of uh, the last year. But no, it's not a good score because uh, propor with the, uh, proportionally, is not a good score because last year was uh, 100 with 100 persons and 100 servers. And today is 50 with 20 people and 20 servers. So uh, what the uh, Green Software Foundation did uh, is to try to propose uh, um, a standard that is called SCI uh, uh, that tries to measure this kind of footprint, this kind of impact uh, per functional unit. So in this uh, really easy um, formula, we can see the energy consumed uh, by the software uh, per uh, the carbon emitted per kilowatt. Why? Because if we have just green software with green energy, uh, this, this carbon uh, impact is really low. If we have a coal or something else, this can be really high. So this is something that is consumed by the software plus the impact of hardware. So the embodied carbon that uh, is in the hardware that we used to run the software. And all this stuff is uh, um, um, keep by a functional unit and is measured by a functional unit. What does it mean? It means that if today, this year, we want an initial measure of this, we try to find before the functional unit, so the employee, the single server, the single application, the business unit, uh, 
the uh, yeah the application I already said. So if we fix the uh, functional unit, we can have something. We can have a score that uh, can be really valuable even period by period, month by month, year over year. So it's not anymore an absolute score that can be uh, like uh, senseless in a sense, okay? But uh, we can really be um, practice with something that we can measure over time. The last thing is matching. And uh, if we commit with the power supplier, uh, with the uh, energy, uh, with an energy commitment in terms of renewable energy, they can make uh, some investment uh, to um, produce the power plants and to uh, commit themselves as well to produce wind and solar energy. So it's uh, very important that if we want to make the difference, we should commit to them with some sort of a monetary commitment. Uh, what I mean? We can say companies, bigger companies, can say to the electricity provider, I want to commit with you with some RECs or uh, uh, PA. Uh, there are um, the, the common names for uh, uh, the renewable energy certificates, okay? And I want to buy to you 100, 1 million, 1,000 of these certificates. And uh, by doing this, you, provider, can be safe that uh, you have a client that uh, is com is committed to the renewable energy so you are producing from today renewable energy as well if many companies goes in that, that direction the interest of the electricity grid of the electricity provider is to build more and more and more renewable energy plants why? Because green must be convenient. So if it's convenient for them, it's even convenient for you. And it uh, is uh, the opposite. Uh, and the matching is something really specific. And the last thing I want to, to deliver to you uh, can be the, uh, the daily matching on the hourly matching. So you can uh, ask to your energy provider, please, I need uh, like... Uh, 18 okay kilowatts per hour uh by for a day and uh, they are providing to you this kind of uh, power by renewable energy but uh, if the time uh, um the the, the grain is uh, uh, the, the the day and not the hour they can provide the green energy in a um, time uh, series that is not really aligned uh, of um, uh, to your uh, consumption okay so they are providing this energy but probably in this hour you are not using any of the kilowatts that are providing while here you need just one but they are providing three so the real match is this so you are committing to the electricity grid but uh, you really want to know by hour, which is the power uh, ingested to the to the grid, because you want to match it by hour. So this is called hourly matching. And uh, the best uh, we can do is to match uh, our green energy sources by hour. Uh, it's not so easy because uh, we need uh, something that uh, is integrated even from the technological point of view. So uh, think about an API, think about something that is uh, automated that uh, in every moment uh, told that, uh, tell us, us uh, you can use uh, now more power because it's renewable or not. Think about, uh, we have a project uh, on uh, GitHub that uh, is uh, like an SDK that you can use to call an API that tells you in a specific zip code in a specific area if you are using um, more green energy or not. So it's something that uh, requires work, okay? But uh, we are in that direction. So uh, it's something that we should know and try to think uh, in that way in the next coming months and year. Uh, 
I want uh, you to invite to the Green Software Foundation website to learn uh, thank, thank them about it and uh, to learn about the SCI uh, specification that is really good in my opinion to measure your footprint and to set your goals uh, for the next year. I finished and I thank you and um, if you have any questions I'm here to I'm here for you. Fantastic Rob thank you for that. So folks if you've got any uh, questions I think it'll probably be a case of you know we've got time for maybe one or two um, I'll open the field. Like one thing that I found interesting about this, right? That I always find interesting when you get into the talk about going green is that word, it kind of has a premium connotation to it, right? Like the moment people hear it, they instantly think that's going to be a high cost. That's going to be something that isn't affordable. I noticed that you did kind of like lean towards this idea of making it affordable. But yeah, thank you. obviously yeah. the, the big challenge is, is pitching and selling that to the people that can make that decision, right? So if you're in that, that type of position, like, what would be your advice to people on getting your foot in the door to have that discussion without being shut down immediately because of that premium expectation? I would say that uh, uh, the really good takeaway of this session is to uh, try to think that every kind of action we have has impact uh, first, uh, when we write a line of code, uh, a cycle, a loop, uh, when we in when we ask something to the AI, think about ChatGPT right now. That is about for for everyone this planet. And uh, after that, this is the awareness part. And after that, uh, the action part uh, is to reduce not just in the software, but even outside the software, our uh, impact. On, uh, on the usage of electricity, okay? Because uh, if we reduce the electricity used uh, indirectly, we are uh, even reduce uh, our emissions. After that, we can think about how we uh, can provide us the electricity in a greener way. Got it, yeah. So you, your, your point is to start with the, essentially separating the two, right? Because like the reason it comes out as being seen as a premium is the moment I say green, someone's thinking, uh, wind turbines, right, or, or solar, and that's going to be less efficient than coal. But your whole point is don't even let them get to that phase. Start them off on going, look, by green, we mean let's actually get the consumption down first yeah. and then figure out where we can clean that up. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Um, I don't think we've got many questions coming through at the sec, and I am aware that we are closing in on the end of our time. Um, People can contact you though, right? If they've got questions, if they want to follow yeah. up, they want to have a deeper discussion. Um, did you have a way they can reach you? Did you have? Do they have a way? Do you have a way they can reach you? Yeah, sure. You can find me on GitHub. Um, you can just find my name as the, probably the first result in, on Google. And uh, there, there's this presentation, and you can reach me out there, and you can ask me anything. Okay, fantastic. Well, Rob, it's been an absolute pleasure to listen to you talk. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to have you now walk as we've got to move on to our next talk. Uh, okay. But once again, thank you, my friend. It was good to talk to you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. This is all we got. Remember the revolution in our minds. This is all we got. Lock me out of this life institution. I am angry and I am illusions. Yes, I hate, but it's not a solution. Try my best, buddy. I'm just a human. Oh.